Hello, today we're in lovely upstate New York on Lake George in the town of Bolton Landing. We're installing a Gould's Water Technology 4 inch, 2 horsepower submersible pump, model 25GS, with a 3AS20 constant pressure drive. As you can see, the home that we're working at is an eight bedroom home with high demand water count fixtures. We also have difficulties with this site due to its proximity of the well and the water system installation and in, in distance to the lake, in close proximity to the lake. And for that point, we had to put additional barriers of protection such as berms, uh, silt fence, and um, setback distances to achieve our proper separation between the septic and neighboring property lines, etc. Alrighty, let's get rolling and get installing the pump. The first thing that we want to do is to properly inventory and verify that the motor and the pump end are properly matched and meet the manufacturer's code as indicated by the end bell on the pump and by the motor manufacturing sticker on the box. We want to record this data along with the serial number for future reference. So if a problem does arise, we have the proper numbers to repair or replace the pump. Secondly, once we inventory and do a motor winding test, we want to refer the current windings to a motor service manual book. That way we know right out of the box, the pump is within factory specifications that no damage has occurred during shipping. We're now ready to assemble the pump onto the motor. We're going to pull the pump out. With the cable guard removed, we're now going to verify that the wet end turns freely before we match it to the motor. And we'll do also the same on the motor to make sure that the motor is not locked up. We'll lay them down, align the splines, and we'll now tighten the bolts on and torque them evenly. We're now going to remove the cable guard from the wet end and bolt the motor and pump together. Now that we've assembled the motor and pump end together, properly torqued the bolts, we're now ready to install the drop pipe and the pump to the pipe. We're using Schedule 120 PVC pipe for diameter to minimize friction loss and to achieve the proper rate of flow. We're then going to put, now putting pipe dope on to make up the thread. Open. And open so we have no grounds on our motor and our winding values are within factory specifications according to the motor application data book. Okay, excellent. Let's place that to the drop cable. By taping the splices assures that the heat shrinks don't move and provide additional protection against abrasion and wear and movement. Now install a torque arrestor to minimize, even though it's a constant pressure variable speed unit, we still want to keep the pump centered in the well, so we'll install a torque arrestor above the pump in the at the area to splice. Safety roof. Now attach a quarter, quarter inch nylon safety rope. Tape or not? Lower mm -hmm. Now we're going to lower the pump into the well. We've completed setting the pump to the desired depth. 
and now we're attaching the pitless adapter to the drop pipe with a short one foot schedule 120 PVC nipple. Now that we've got the pump set into the well and secured into the pitless adapter, we'll apply a chlorine solution to disinfect the well to kill any bacteria that we might introduce while handling the pump and the drop pipe and wire. At this point, we'll wire the drop cable to the underground cable, and then we'll go inside and install the drive and the components. So let's summarize what we've done here. We verified the correct wet end to the motor. We tested the motor windings. We tested the motor for grounds. We have then attached the pump and motor together. We've hooked them to the drop pipe. We spliced the wires. We set the pump to the appropriate depth. We disinfected the well. We chlorinated the well to eliminate any bacteria and uh, set the pump down in the pitless adapter into the receiver. So let's go inside and let's get the drive installed, the tank, and start this up, and we'll go from there. Alrighty, so we just got in from outside. We met with our mechanical contractor, and you can see it's an extensive heating system and cold water supply system as witnessed by the two instantaneous hot water heaters, the furnace, and the multiple zones witnessed on top of the wall there. So this is one of the reasons why we selected this particular pump and motor to meet their demands for flow and pressure. As you can see, we've got a stainless steel manifold, we've got copper transitioning from our underground, and we've piped everything in conduit to meet NEC code. Um, a couple of highlights are the things that we should point out. Because of the high volume and high pressure, we really wanted to go with a higher relief valve. So you don't want to put a 75 pound non-adjustable relief valve in, we put a 100 pound adjustable. We've also got a glycerin filled gauge to take the surge and pressure out, a boiler drain to facilitate if we wanted raw water samples or to drain the system or the house, a boiler drain and shut off to the house supply. Now, the home is not, as you can see, it's under construction. So the mechanical contractors aren't ready for us to energize the complete house. So when we start up today, we're gonna just purge off the tank drop the air out of the line, get the air out, and then we'll set and adjust our settings. In the sake of time, we didn't want to have to wait and have everything, uh, watch it have a solder, make up the fittings. But when you make up stainless steel fittings, you should use stainless steel tape, um, and there's not as much give in stainless fittings as there once was in brass. So the tank, everybody likes to ask, hey, what size tank do we put in on a constant pressure system? Well, this particular tank is the Goulds V25. And with this size tank, we want to use the 2020 rule, which tells us that we want to have 20% of our maximum pump flow uh, designed into the total volume of our tank. And so by utilizing this particular tank, that gives us a perfect match with the pump that we selected, which is the 20, two horsepower, 25 gallon per minute series. So in a minute, we're going to have our installer come in He's made temporary wiring connections and he's got everything in the box. We're going to finish wiring. We also, because the factory, if you can minimize the length of your transducer cable, we've made particular provisions to shorten it. The factory standard is 10 foot and as you can see, we were able to mount the drive in close proximity to the tank so we don't need that much cable. And um, we're going to have our installer come in, he's going to wire things up and we're going to then adjust the pump and so on. Alrighty, so Tyler's joined us and we're gonna start by hooking up the incoming power. We verify that the circuitry is correct and there's a properly sized breaker installed to run the pump. So it'll take a few moments for him just to attach the black and a white wire in the ground. The beauty of the Gould's controller is that it's very simple to wire, quite self-explanatory. Uh, but the settings are crucial, and so you should refer to the book. We'll discuss the overload setting in just a few moments. 
Now, depending on what part of the country you're from, your local electrical codes may vary. And in some areas, we would be required to turn this portion of the work over to a licensed electrician, but in the county that we're working in today, that requirement is not mandated. Well, Tyler's making up those last few wires on the drive. Let's talk a little bit about the set point. Since we have a two horsepower motor in the well, it's a 230 volt three phase motor, what we have to do is set and check our ma uh, maximum service factor amps. The maximum service factor amps on this particular pump is 7.6. So if we go into our catalog, you'll see on the 3AS controller that that would require a setting point for our overload at number nine. And so when he gets that wired up, we'll turn that overload setting to number nine. Now, once this is all wired and prior to the owner obtaining a CO in the house, the electrical and plumbing system will be inspected. The electric by the electrical underwriters and the plumbing by the local building and codes enforcement people. just installing the little plastic covers over the terminals and now he's getting ready to install the wires from the tr pressure transducer. As we discussed earlier, with the tank, most tanks are shipped with a pre-charge of 38 PSI and with our operating pressure in conjunction with the requirements of the home at 70, that required us to make an air adjustment to the top of the tank. And although our pre-charge pressure was 38 PSI, we need to set our pressure on that tank at approximately 20 pounds from our operating pressure. So we had to boost it from 38 to 50 PSI. Alrighty. He's just checking the integrity of those connections. Um, Everything looks tight below. Our wiring, we'll get ready to turn the power on. Now again, as we stated, yes, Tyler, if you turn that to number nine on our overload setting, okay. And um, at this point, we'll get ready to turn it on and purge the system out. Okay, Tyler, so we've double checked our wiring connections. We made our connection of the transducer. We made sure the ground is tight, clamps are on. I guess we're ready to power up. Give me a okay when you're ready. Drive is energized. We'll have a lot of air to purge because the underground is 180 feet. Pressure starting to go up. That's good. Checking our manifold for any signs of leaks. Looks good. Running about 71 PSI, just clearing a little bit of the air out. System seems to be running fine. Running at 45 hertz, 43, 5.1 amps, 4.9. That's within what we need. Zero faults on one, two, no faults on three. No faults on four. The nice thing about the Aquabar Solo and the complete line of Aquabars is that they're cost effective, reliable, they're easy to set up, um, and with the nine diagnostic points that they have in them, uh, it's very good for your customers. You've got run dry protection, overload, um, temperature sensors. So for the investment, you've got a whole amount of safety controls built right into the product. Tyler, I think we've got everything. I think we're all set. Well, what we should do, if you want to put the cover on, the last thing we should do is attach the pump labels to the cover and a sticker for the customer so that they can call us in the future and invent that they need service. And uh, we should be out of here in a couple of minutes. Let me grab those stickers while you grab that. 
So there you go, as you can see, everything went smooth. The customer's now up and running and has water. We've been Gould's dealers for over 35 years. We found their factory training, their inventory, sales support to be far and superior to any other brand of manufacturers. We ask you to visit to find out more at Goulds.com. Thank you for watching and have a nice day.